Are you an INTP T or an INTP A personality type? Okay, so what I found is you can group INTPs into two different types depending on how neurotic they are. So the INTP A is low on neuroticism, that means they are generally sure of themselves, they are not inclined to doubt themselves, they tend to feel that they have done the maths, they figured it out, and they are strong enough in themselves that they can confidently speak about and share what they are thinking without worrying about how they will be perceived. So the INTPA thinker is different from the INTPT doubter in the sense that the doubter tends to often second guess themselves. As a doubter, you constantly find yourself going over different options, thinking maybe you missed something, maybe you didn't think about it close enough. At other times you know the right answer, but you worry about mainly other people. You worry that you will come off as rude, you're afraid of sounding too critical, you're afraid of sounding arrogant, you don't want uh, other people to dislike you, you want to fit in. And by sharing your thoughts and your mind, you feel that uh, you are putting that in danger. So the INTPT has a primary struggle and that is building up, you know, that base level of confidence where you can share your ideas with other people and give honest criticism and input without worrying about upsetting other people. The INTPA has a different problem, and that is that at times they can be a bit too arrogant, a bit too self-assured, and sometimes they will think they have the right answer, and they won't be humble enough to realize that they've got it wrong. So the INTPA will sometimes share criticism without regard for other people, and at times you'll be so sure that you have the right answer, but in reality, you're just guessing. And then, Introverted thinking is an interesting process because this dominant function, the INTP, it relies on solid logic and reason. And while something can be very reasonable, while something can sound very convincing, while something can appear to be very logical, it might not have anything to do with the practical laws of the real world. Now, the INTPA has an advantage over the INTPT, and that is because the INTPA, assertive INTP, is able to test their conclusions, share their ideas, and put their ideas into practice, they will get a lot more feedback on what they do. The INTPA will instantly know if they were right or wrong. They will put something out there, they'll share an idea, they'll say something crazy, and they'll run an experiment, and they'll get immediate input on whether it was right and wrong. On the other hand, INTPT will struggle because they think about something, they think about it over and over again, but they never actually do anything with it. So their thoughts stay inside, and inside you can never really get the proper feedback on what you're doing. You have no idea on your score, how good you are at the task, how uh, good an idea is, because you're afraid to share it with other people. Other people might already have the answers you need, your environment might already be able to give you the tools, the resources necessary to pursue this idea, but you're too afraid to ask, too afraid of being wrong. So the fear of being wrong is a big issue for the INTPT, and more often it's about image. Extroverted feeling is stronger in the INTPT than in the INTPA. The INTPT has a lot more of worries regarding the tribe. So as an INTPT, other people occupy your mind to a degree that it's to you very stressful or even anxiety inducing. Because you are constantly worrying about other people, what they think about you and how you appear to other people, you don't get yourself the space and time and environment where you can really do what you enjoy most. A lot of time constantly thinking about other people or trying to be nice is going to drain you of energy. It's going to cause you to lose enthusiasm and excitement for what you do. You could have a lot more joy in your work or in what you do and a lot more passion for the projects you're working with if you were able to shake off that worry about how, what other people will think. What if other people won't like it? What if other people think it's stupid? Yeah, if you didn't worry so much about that, if only you didn't worry so much about that, it would be a lot easier. It would be a lot easier to just put yourself out there and really explore, dedicate yourself to an idea. The 
INTP has an advantage in the sense that they are better at being educators. The INTPT is often a teacher or a democrat. The INTPT often knows the right answer but also realizes the value of the group understanding that answer. As an INTPT, you're better at communicating your ideas in a way that other people will understand. You can give feedback to other people without making other people feel small. You have a degree of humility. Your humility and your ability to admit to being wrong and to not having everything right is going to relax other people around you and it's going to make it easier for other people to work together with you. It's going to be easier for you to work in groups with people. It's going to be easier for you to share and connect with others. The INTPA has this big issue of how do I get other people on board? How do I avoid being put on the cross for what I'm about to say? By sharing whatever is on your mind or by upsetting the group or by doing something that you know other people are going to disagree with, you are putting yourself in the firing range of other people. So you risk running into conflicts and causing tension and upsetting people. You risk uh, uh, causing drama or conflicts at work because you speak your mind too freely, because uh, you say things without thinking about it. And okay, uh, when HR comes calling, that's not really fun. So as an INTPA, uh, it's sometimes good to recognize that uh, you don't always have to be right. So you don't always have to share everything on your mind. You don't always have to uh, put everything out there. And it's good to know who you can talk to openly and freely and who you don't, who you can't talk to. So recognize that not everyone's going to be open to hear what you're about to say. So find a boss that will listen to your ideas and your feedback and that will appreciate you for sharing things, even if they are sometimes negative or critical. Recognize and value of friends that will enjoy and laugh at your ability to pull calls and things, your ability to argue against them. Recognize that uh, it's, there are people out there that enjoy having conflicts and discussions and arguments back and forth, but there are also people out there that don't like it. So learn who you can talk to and who you can't talk to on that level and uh, find that compromise. Besides that, it's about learning to, uh, while you trust in your own judgment and while you trust in your own ideas and while you should always stand up for yourself and what you think first, always give other people the benefit of the doubt. Always have a small hunch that maybe I could be wrong. What is it I could have missed? What is it I could have done differently? What is it I could have changed? Whenever you're in a discussion with other people or in a conflict about needs or who goes first or who did right or who did wrong or who should have done something differently, recognize also beyond your ability to see flaws in other people what you can do differently and share those things openly with other people so say yeah i could have done this better and i think you could have done this better and have that kind of a discussion where you can trade back and forth constructive criticism for both of you and uh, both the other person and both yourself so when thinking about these things when you're thinking about if you're an intp or a or an intpt recognize it's also a scale there are INTPs that are on the level of very assertive, then there are INTPs that are kind of on the border, and there are INTPs that are strongly turbulent. And recognize when you're strongly turbulent the influence of neuroticism on this. This is not just who you are, it's how you feel. And so the reason you're turbulent is emotional in its nature. There are emotions that are inspiring you to go down these spirals. So the feeling of anxiety and stress is going to push you down that level of health and it's going to push you more into second guessing yourself, becoming more clumsy, becoming more worried, becoming more anxious, thinking about the things you could have done wrong, worrying about the outcomes, thinking about the future and getting lost in hypotheticals. So recognize when that spiral is starting. Recognize when anxiety is taking over and you're starting to go down the spiral. And tell yourself this. I know that I am feeling anxious right now and that's why I'm thinking about this. So just have that base level of awareness. Work on recognizing that in yourself and when it happens so that you can listen to and understand your body and your physical expressions and how your thoughts are shaped by your emotions.
Beyond that, look at and find smart solutions to keep you from going down that spiral. Are there any techniques you could apply? Is there anything you could do that would help you get out of that cycle if you start going down the rabbit hole? If you start becoming very self-critical, if you start bashing down yourself or berating yourself, if you start uh, going negative about everything, if you only see the worst in every situation, if you find yourself uh, uh, worrying about hypotheticals, recognize, okay, what is it I could do to make myself feel better? And obviously, the best thing you can do is to break the loop. What is something I do feel confident about? If I'm doubting myself, what is it I do feel confident about? What small details can I find that I do feel to have a strong feeling about? What is it I know for certain? Go down and start with those small points. Okay, what is it I know? And what is it I can be sure of? And what outcome can I expect will happen for sure? And what positive events do I think are going to come up soon? What opportunities are going to be made available to me so shortly? What is it that's next that I am, can look forward to? Start thinking about and rewiring yourself to think about those things alongside the negatives. You know, don't be afraid to think about the negatives because, hey, that's going to be there. That's a part of life. But balance it out with the positives. So learn to have both. Learn to avoid a one-sided negative monologue. Finally, no matter if you're a doubter or a thinker, you can grow, you can learn to better manage your emotions and experiences, and you can learn to become more healthy as an INTP. So let me know in the comments down below, were you an INTP A or were you an INTP D? Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.